I'm standing here in front of you today because the ceiling in our old office fell down and it broke everything. It broke our furniture, it broke our equipment, it pretty much broke everything inside that room. Let me backtrack a little bit. I used to work at this company called Inetra. Inetra was a startup from MIT Media Labs in Boston and we were building mobile eye diagnostic devices to give you an eye test using a smartphone. I was primarily working on the hardware of this device. And to do more so prototyping, I used to use this makerspace called Artisan's Asylum. Artisan's Asylum was this huge makerspace, about the size of two football fields. And within that, to travel, we used to use scooters. It was that big. What was most exciting about this place was there were, there were artists, engineers, doctors, all sorts of people working in the same space, collaborating and making some really interesting projects. Anything from a gigantic robot that they could sit on and ride to making boats. And the project that I started was building a small table. That's the first thing that I did when I reached there. What was exciting about building a table at Artisan's Asylum was that people from all over helped me make it. And within a week that I finished building this table, not only did I know how to use half the equipment over there, but I made so many friends who wanted to teach me and talk to me and uh, show me how to go about things. Around that time, Anetra asked me that, hey, would you like to go back to India, continue prototyping the device, and test it there, because obviously it had more of an impact in India than it did in Boston. I thought that was a beautiful opportunity. So I landed up in Mumbai, and I started traveling various parts of rural India, taking eye tests, coming up with hardware improvements. But there was a tiny problem. I didn't have the same access to prototyping tools like I did in Boston. And I didn't have an access to a beautiful community that I could share my ideas with. And that's when the ceiling fell down. And that's where the story begins. Instead of going out and buying new tables, we decided we we're going to build them ourselves. So I reached out on Facebook and Twitter and asked people in Mumbai to join me and help me build some tables. That day, six random people showed up and we started making some tables. What was exciting was I taught them what I knew and they taught me what they knew. And what was even more exciting is that they kept coming back. They kept coming back every Sunday to make something or the other. Anything from a water bottle bazooka to making an LED cube. All sorts of fun projects. And within no time, the space started filling up. There were more and more tools accumulating at the space. There were more and more projects accumulating at the space. And we really didn't have any space to move. And that's when we went in search looking for a garage. And we found this place in Bandra. And we hope, and immediately with the way it looks, we started working on making the space beautiful and accessible to everyone. And we opened it out to everyone in Mumbai to come use that space and try out their ideas. Another thing that we started doing at this time was we started doing a lot of trainings and workshops to share, share with people what we knew and then to share with us what they knew. And that's when India School of Design and Innovation reached out to us and they said that you're doing something interesting. We're setting up a design school. Let's work together. I thought that was a brilliant opportunity. So I, we packed up our bags and we moved to ISDI and we set up shop over there. And we put all our toys, our 3D printers, our later cutters, everything bang in the center of the room and we allowed people to share it and use it. What was interesting was that because we believe that innovation is more important than machines, so it's okay for anyone to break the machines. And we let everyone explore and try out their ideas. What's the worst that could happen? The machines would break, but that was okay because every time you break something, that's when you learn how to make it better. And that's when you learn how to make new improvements to interesting devices. Uh, at that time, I used to also teach a 3D printing course at the school. What was exciting was, because this course was open for everyone in Mumbai to come to, there were designers and engineers and artists, everyone coming together to learn 3D printing. What was beautiful was that when I was teaching about the 3D printer, the designers would only pay attention to all the beautiful things that can come out of the 3D printer, while the engineer only cared about how it works. And when I was done, the designer had no clue what I taught about the 3D printer and the engineer had no clue what to make out of the 3D printer. <laughs> and that's where some interesting collaborations started happening. For example, the C3PO project. On the outside, it's all origami. But on the inside, it's all robotics and electronics and 3D printed parts that made it walk and move. And then it was showcased all over Mumbai. What's interesting about this project is that there was an origami artist who collaborated with an electronic engineer, a mechanical engineer, an artist, a sculptor to make this project happen, all in one place. 
Soon after that, I moved back to Delhi because what I was doing did not make sense to anyone and it didn't make sense to me. So I wanted to rethink and understand how to make this sustainable because I'd already left my beautiful US paying salary job a while back. So now I was trying to understand that how do you make this sustainable and how do you grow this culture? Because I knew it was important that we need, need to have this sort of a culture in India. And that's when I met this artist called Madhuvanti. She uh, used to do something called something sketchy and she loved painting murals on walls. And as part of Street Art Delhi project, she wanted to paint my dad's old office. And she painted this on it. It says, pass it on, half in Hindi, half in English. And pass it on is our philosophy of passing on the knowledge and passing on the creativity. But most importantly, it's been our Wi-Fi password since we started. <laughs> and soon, that began a beautiful community in Delhi as well. And all sorts of people from all over Delhi started visiting us and trying out their ideas, sharing their tools and sharing their knowledge and opening everything and experimenting. And then I moved back to Mumbai and I saw this. The space in Mumbai was packed with people. People from all over India had started coming over there, changing knowledge and also prototyping their ideas. There was no space to move. And on top of that, we started using space that ISDI hadn't given to us. This was on the back rooms of ISDI where we weren't supposed to be. So I knew for a fact that it was time for us to move out of here and find a new home. And that's when we raised an Indiegogo campaign, a crowdfunding campaign, to raise some funds to find a new space. And we found a space in Andheri. What was exciting about this place was that not only did people support this with funding, but they also came from all over the world to help us make it. Everything from plastering the walls, to making the lighting, to making all the furniture and all the tables was made by all of us. And now the space looks something like this. And it, has <coughs> Thank you. and it has everything from a laser cutting lab, a 3D printing lab, a biohacking lab, a robotics lab, open for everyone and all of you to come and explore and try your ideas out. What's really interesting is that when we started this, we were trying to create a community of like-minded people to get together and make interesting things. But what we ended up doing was we created a, a cult of unlike-minded people who started coming together and trying out their ideas. And that led to some very, very exciting projects. For example, there's this girl, Khyati. She started this thing called the Black Canvas. What she does is she makes leather cut notebooks and she sells them using the laser cutter and she etches designs on it. What's exciting about this is that it's a beautiful example of the maker revolution, where a maker or a simple tinkerer can start creating products and sell it all over the world with ease. Another really beautiful example is that there is this doctor, he's making retinal imaging devices. The exciting part about this project is the doctor himself is making this device. And who else better than the doctor to make this device? And he's collaborated with a designer and he's making simple adapters to take images of your retina and he's selling them. Another beautiful example where the consumer is becoming the maker and is able to take his projects out into the market in a very small amount of time. Another example, which is very cool, there's this girl, Claire, she's come all the way from the United States and she's spending some time in India. And she's 3D printing prosthetic limbs and providing it to people who need it, who, with disabilities so they can use their hands once again. Another beautiful example, there is a civil engineer who has no background of electronics whatsoever. And he's making a satellite ground station on the roof of the asylum. And when it's completed, hopefully in the next month, it would be the first open source satellite ground station in Asia. <laughs> Another very exciting project, there is this musician who's using hydraulics to make musical instruments. There is Kobe who's making an auto rickshaw with gullwing doors, with maker tools in it, all sorts of tools in it, and he plans to take it to schools and colleges and give everyone access and spread this culture. So no matter how wacky or crazy your idea is, as long as it makes sense to you, and you think it's cool, and it makes you happy, that's all that matters. And for me, it was building tables. So if you had nothing to lose, what would you make? <laughs>